In this lesson, I teach you how to communicate more effectively with C-suite executives and higher-ups. Do you tense up and get nervous when you're talking to your manager, your boss, or your supervisor? Is the inability to communicate with them affecting your work, your career, and the chances of getting ahead? In professional settings, your career success is directly impacted by your communication skills. If you communicate in an effective manner, you're guaranteed to have much better business outcomes. For this reason, I am sharing effective communication strategies to use when speaking with management or a C-suite executive. Let's get started. Many people might feel intimidation or even trepidation when interfacing with a C-suite executive. While this might seem to be a completely rational reaction, is it really gonna help you communicate better with the higher ups? Probably not. So the very first step before we do anything else is to eliminate the feeling of intimidation and trepidation from your emotional vocabulary. Now that you're in this headspace, I want you to try and implement the following. Be so good they can't ignore you. So you might have heard this from Cal Newport, who's a professor of computer science at Georgetown University, and he wrote a book called So Good They Can't Ignore You. And so he advocates that cultivating the skills that will help you position yourself as a qualified and credible expert is about being really good at what you did, honing those skills, honing your craft. And so not only walk the walk, but talk the talk, meaning you truly become so good that they can't ignore you. And when you head into a conversation with a C-suite exec, remind yourself of this. Having those skills will set you up for success. So keeping that in mind as you talk to someone that you might be intimidated by. All right, two, solve a problem for them that they didn't know they had. All right, so this can be solve a problem for them or they can be solve a problem for them that they didn't know that they had or that they're just unaware of until you bring it to their attention. And so if you're going to solve an issue for them that they didn't even know that they had, it's not even on their radar, that will require you to be highly observant. For instance, you notice that in a meeting, your supervisor appeared frazzled by the lack of social engagement on the company's social platforms. Go to the drawing board and brainstorm to come up with a new social campaign to boost customer engagement. In a meeting, you propose the campaign and voila, you fill a void. It's just like that. But you really have to keep your antennae open. Make yourself indispensable. And so what you're doing is you're showing them your value. So for this strategy, you wanna make yourself indispensable. And if you're not sure how yet, then focus on adding value. When you focus on value add, you're much more focused on finding solutions to a problem, bringing value to the company, showcasing ability, being a problem solver, being a team player, and less focused on yourself. And when you're less focused on yourself, guess what? You're less stressed, you're less nervous when talking to someone who might intimidate you. Anytime you interface with a C-suite executive, add value in all the ways you know how. Help them without expecting anything in return. Fill a void without being told to do so. Solve a problem they didn't know how to solve or they didn't know they had in the first place. Propose new ideas. Come up with problems and find solutions. In any way you can, hold yourself to high standards and work to go that extra mile. Under promise and over deliver. That will serve you very well. Exude unbreakable, unshakable confidence. So do this to the point where someone identifies you as the most confident person they've ever met or the most confident person in the room. Just a reminder though, confidence doesn't mean being cocky. In fact, the most confident people I know are also some of the most humble. So being confident stems from believing that you're confident. That's one thing. And to believe you're confident, you need to feel confident. So things like assuming a power pose, which is what Amy Cuddy talks about in her book and in her TED Talk, a lot of research there, so that you can rewire your neural pathways to feel that confidence and then exude it and present it to people. Showing that confidence will not only reflect well on the person, but it will also make the exchange with the C-suite executive all the more pleasant because everyone likes to communicate with someone who is, feels good in their skin and is confident. 
create strong rapport. So make it an aim of yours to establish strong rapport with them. And remember, rapport is that bond, that connection that you have, that je ne sais quoi, when we just get along with someone, we seem to click with them right off the bat. And so to do this, you want to get on the inside of their inner circle. And this will take time, but that's okay. It's not a race. And you will over time if you're doing this in a genuine way, right? By showing a real true interest in what they're interested in and what they're saying. And you don't necessarily have to be interested in the same hobbies, activities, or interests, or even professional endeavors as they, but you can genuinely show interest in how they talk about those things and by the questions that you ask and getting them to talk more about what interests them. And as they talk about that, what interests them, connect the dots. This will enable you to ask follow-up questions and send follow-up emails to continue the conversation because that is the key. You want to keep the conversation going and flowing. And it's not just a one-time conversation where, oh, we had a nice meet and greet, we had a nice chat on the phone, or we had a great little coffee chat. No, it's a, you're nurturing this relationship, this professional relationship. And it doesn't have to, and it probably won't all happen in a single meeting, right? It's going to take time, but it's actually better this way to cultivate rapport over time because this way it's going to be more genuine and stronger. So aim for weekly or monthly check-ins, and this could be over the phone or on email or over coffee, depending on their leadership style preference and also availability. C-suites are very, very busy people. And just be sure that you're respecting their time as well. All right, awesome. So we talked about five strategies for communicating more effectively and confidently with C-suite executives and higher ups. Be so good they can't ignore you. Solve a problem for them, perhaps one they didn't even know they had. Make yourself indispensable by adding as much value as you can to each conversation and to every interaction you have with them. Exude unbreakable, unshakable confidence and aim to create strong rapport with weekly or monthly check-ins. So when you implement these five strategies in concert, you'll feel less pressured to perform or to be your version of perfect, whatever that might mean to you, perfect employee, perfect supervisor, perfect coworker. Instead, it's much more about how you can be a positive force in the person's professional life and at the company or at the startup. By focusing on creating value, you'll make it less about you. And when the attention is less on us, then we're much more able to exude confidence that we maybe even didn't know we had. We can be less nervous, we can be more you know, assertive, and go after those big, big goals, because I know that you have them. All right, Explorers, that's it for me today. If you loved this lesson, be sure to give it a big thumbs up on YouTube. And if you prefer to listen to this lesson, check out our podcast. It's on exploring.co forward slash blog, and you can find the podcast there, as well as wherever you listen and download your podcasts. And if you'd like to help our channel continue to grow, then feel free to share this with colleagues, coworkers, your supervisor, whomever would like to improve their communication skills and professional social skills. All right, I will see you in the next one where we'll continue exploring together. Happy exploring, everyone.